Hi, first graders. Welcome back to the TV classroom. How are you today? Today is Tuesday, March 2nd. I still cannot believe we're in the month of March. It's just gone really fast here at the TV classroom. Mm -hmm. Rashid, how are you doing today? You're doing okay? Oh, good. Friends, let's check in with our zones before we get on with our learning today. How are you feeling today? What's your body doing? Hmm. Are you feeling sad or tired or happy or worried or really excited or mad? What are you feeling? Mr. Kevin, how are you today? I'm in the, uh, the blue, I, I mean, not blue, but the yellow and green zone, right oh, in there. Why are you in the yellow green zone? Well, just, I'm, I'm kind of excited. Oh. You know why? No, why? You know, uh, it's true or false Tuesday, so I get to make the sound effects. Yes, it's so <laughs> fun. It's one of my favorite days. Yeah. True or false Tuesday, making the sound effects. I really enjoy this day, too. Hmm. And how about you, Miss Wally? Well, I'm in the greenish yellow zone, too. I have some decisions that are going to be made, and I don't know what's going to happen yet, and I'm someone who doesn't like the unknown. Some people like it, I don't. So I'm just feeling a little bit anxious, but I'm really okay. And it's really important, friends, that when you're feeling a feeling to just identify it. Say, ooh, I'm feeling a little anxious because, but I'm okay. And you can still be in the green zone and have a little yellow with it, right, Mr. Kevin? That's right. Should yep. we take a deep breath? Maybe we should. Let's all take a deep breath together. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, that always feels so good, doesn't it? Yeah. I think we need to spend more time in life stopping and taking deep breaths. It always feels good every time I do it. All right, let's get going with True or False Tuesday. Is this equation true or false? It's a friend of 10. Whew. Is this equation true or false? Mr. Kevin, how did you know it was true? Well, so four plus six, friends of 10. That's right. So that's a 10 and two more, 12. Awesome, okay. Let's look at this one, friends. Is this true or false? If we use Mr. Kevin's strategy of making the friend of 10 and then four more, we would get 14. 14 does not equal 13. That is not true. Okay, is this true or false? Again. Mr. Kevin, why is it false? Well, you know, without even counting or adding, I knew it was false because when you have even numbers <gasps> oh. as an answer, and then there's an odd number as one oh. of, yeah, yeah, one of the add-ins, then it's not going to make an even number. Oh, first graders, this is something you're going to learn maybe this year, maybe next year that if your answer is even, even means the answer can be divided in half equally, it ends in a zero, two, four, six, or eight, then all of the add-ins have to be even. Great strategy, Mr. Kevin. Here's how I found out it was false. There it is again, friend of 10, and I know 10 and seven does not equal 16. It is 17. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one, true or false? Friend of 10 and nine more, 19. 19 is the same as 19. Woohoo! nice job, Woo first graders. Today, we are learning to organize data. Rashid, I wonder what I mean by that. Friends, have you ever been with one of your friends and been like, okay, I'm gonna take a chart and we're gonna talk about favorite ice cream flavors. Whose favorite ice cream flavor is vanilla? Whose favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry? 
whose is chocolate? And you tally it and you figure out how many of your friends like chocolate ice cream, how many like strawberry ice cream, and how many like vanilla ice cream. You're collecting data. So we're gonna talk about when we survey or collect information, how do we go about organizing it so we can see the patterns and understand the data? How fun. Let's take a look at our warm up. I'm gonna give you a teen number. I'm gonna draw it and you have to tell me what the number is. Are you ready? Well, first of all, we know that it's going to have this. So I'm just gonna leave that up there. It's all filled in. How much is that? 10. And then my bottom part, this time I'm gonna do this. What, what teen number did I make? 12, I have 10 and two make 12. Do it with me. 10 and two make 12. Very good. Okay. It's I'm funny, Miss Wally, that they call 12 a teen number. They call it a teen number because it's made of tens and extra ones. Yeah. It's Even a number. You don't say 12 teen. No, we don't. Or two teen. Or we 11 don't. teen. That's why the numbers between 10 and 20 are tricky. Mm -hmm. They're some of the trickiest numbers in all the numbers because they don't always follow the verbal pattern. They follow the math pattern of 10 and some more, but it's not like 21, 22, 23, 24, or 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. The teen numbers are like 12, 11, 13, 14, and then it's 15 instead of 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there's three of them that don't really follow the pattern. So we have to, be, we have to practice them a lot. Okay. Let's do another one. Are you ready, friends? Here we go. What teen number did I make? What was that, Rashid? How did you know it was 14? There was 10, one 10 and four ones. 10 and four makes 14. Do it with me. 10 and four makes 14. Great. Okay, we are gonna stop there and go on with learning about data. Let's say I have some cubes. Can you show my whiteboard? I have some cubes. Here they are. And I've got, mm, here we go, I've got all these cubes. What could you do to group the cubes that are alike? Hmm. Rashid, I need you to take a look. Can you turn around, friend? Okay, I need your help. Hmm. What could we do to group these in ways that are alike? What was that? You're remembering back to kindergarten? Rashid said, I remember in kindergarten during choice time, I would sit and there were these colored cups and I had this whole pile of little bears and they were all different colors. And I would put the bear that goes with the color in the right cup. So like all the red bears together, all the blue bears together, all the pink bears together. You think we could sort the cubes by their color? Okay, what would our categories be? Friends, what would our categories be? What do you see? Blue, green, pink. Okay, so I'm gonna sort them. Are you ready, friends? Blue, green, pink. Is that what you would do? Okay. So we can, we can sort them or group them by a similar attribute, the thing that's the same about them. Okay. Let's take a look at these fish. Mr. Kevin, can you pull up just full screen? How could we group these fish that are alike? How might we put them in a group? Hmm. We could do it by color again. What would our groups be? Red fish, purple fish, okay. What's another way we could group these fish? Ooh, 
fish with stripes and fish with dots? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about fish swimming left and fish swimming right? Oh. Ooh, that's another way we could group the fish. There are lots of ways to group things. It's not always by the color. It might be by what they're doing, or it might be by something they look like. Yes, Mr. Kevin? I saw one that's a little subtle. Ooh, what's that? Fish that are smiling and fish that are not smiling. Ooh, I saw another one. Fish that are big and fish that are small. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's so many ways to group these fish, friends. It says, use the tens frames to group cubes that are alike. How many of each color? I'm gonna look and see if we do the, we're gonna do the fish. Can we do the fish instead of the cubes, friends? I want to think of a way that we could group these fish. Okay, and we're gonna use cubes to represent them. So I have two different kinds of colored cubes and we're gonna decide what the cubes mean. How should we group them? Rashid, what do you think? What should we do? Mr. Kevin, what do you think? How should we group them today? Hmm. hmm. Well, I, I, you know, I like grouping them by color. You like grouping them by color? Yeah. Well, and I even have the right colors to match that, so that would be great. Oh, perfect. Okay, so what are our categories gonna be? Well, I see fish that are red, and I see fish that are purple. So my categories are going to be red fish and purple fish. Now, we're gonna make some tens frames. Go ahead and do this on your whiteboard. Make a tens frame. Those are my fun tense frame sound effects. Okay, let's count how many red fish are there. Okay, I'm gonna mark them so I know that I've counted them. That's really important when you're collecting data to be accurate in your collection. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five red fish. So how many red blocks do we need? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, how many purple fish? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, one, are you doing it with me? Two, three, four, five, six. What could we say about the red fish and the purple fish? What's a statement you could make about them? Hmm. Mr. Kevin, what's one thing you could say about our red fish and our purple fish? I think there are more purple fish than red fish. Oh, more purple fish than red fish. That's a great statement. There are more purple fish than red fish swimming in our picture. Hmm, what's another statement we could make about the red fish and the purple fish? There are five red fish in our picture. There are six purple fish in our picture. That's one. What's another one you could say? Hmm. Oh, Rashid. Tell me again, Rashid. Rashid said, there is one more purple fish than red fish. One more purple fish than red fish. Because how did you know, Rashid? Both red fish and purple fish have five blocks and Purple fish has an extra one, so the, and it has just one extra. Oh, let's change our categories and let's see if the numbers change. Okay, first grade friends. Let's do, instead of color, let's do fish facing the right and fish 
facing the left. So we're gonna do the right fish, R for right, L for left. Okay, let's do the right ones first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how many to the left? One, two, three, three. One, two, three. Okay, Mr. Kevin, what's a statement we can say about the fish who are swimming to the right and the left? There are three fish only swimming to the left. Mm-hmm. And there are eight fish swimming to the right. Mm-hmm. There are more fish swimming to the right than fish swimming to the left. Mm-hmm. Pebble, what was that? Pebble said, I'm using the strategy Rashid used, and I noticed that with, there's three fish swimming to the right and three fish swimming to the left, but then the right fish has more. It has five more fish swimming to the right oh. than fish swimming to the left. Nice thinking. Okay, friends, let's take a look at your assignment today. Today, you are gonna do page 403 and 404 to talk about sorting. That's doing what we just did with the fish. We're looking at what's happening with the fish, how could we sort them and categorize them so we can see the data and talk about them. So you're gonna give examples of sorting. Then you're going to look at some ways they sorted or tell some ways you could sort the balloons that are alike. That's your assignment today. Today we learned to organize data. We determined the rule for sorting the data. We decided what we're gonna do about color, about the direction they're swimming, about the pattern they have. And we were able to predict that we were gonna add items to the groups and we created categories for the data. Fish swimming to the right, fish swimming to the left. And we told how many were in each. Fish that were red, fish that were purple. And then we organized and we counted. Awesome job today, Mr. Kevin. If they want to contact us here at the TV classroom, how can they do that? Yes, uh, students, Mrs. Wally would love to answer your questions, and mm -hmm. she will definitely answer you. And if you mail her, she'll send you a, a mail in the, in the mail, an, <laughs> an envelope in the mail back. <laughs> if you email her, she'll send you an email back. I will. TV classroom at Tacoma.k12.wa.us or TV classroom 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. We're right down by where the fish swim, both left and right. <laughs> That's true, we are. All right, friends, up next is your break. During your break, you need to gather your materials for your lesson with Ms. Oslin. You're gonna need to get your ELA materials, so your ELA packet, your learning notebook, your pencil, and your learning buddy. Take your break and be ready to learn when she comes back on the screen. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye friends. Greetings young adventurers. You will be going on a quest. It will be a dangerous quest filled with obstacles and dangerous creatures. Should you make it to the end of each level, you will receive a coin. Find all four coins and you will be crowned the champion and receive this prize. Good luck, young adventurers. Well, time for my nap. Good day, young adventurers, and good luck.
Greetings, young adventurers! Congratulations on collecting all four coins! Well done! By completing this quest, you will now receive your prize! I hope to one day see you again for another adventure. Goodbye, young adventurers. Welcome back from your break. Excellent job being responsible students and gathering your materials. You can take your ELA packet, your learning and writing notebook, and your pencil and just put them off to the side. We won't need those yet. But go ahead and hold on to your learning buddy if they are going to help you focus today. Let's remind ourselves today and every day your job is to listen, share, read, and write. You are a strong listener when you keep your eyes on the speaker when you listen to the speaker, and when you think about the words and the stories and the questions that we're dealing with. You are going to get an opportunity to share your thinking. I do want you talking about your ideas. We you talking about the books that we're reading. If someone's in the room with you, you can go ahead and share with them. Or you can have a learning buddy or your pet rock, or you can always share with me on the screen as well. Now yesterday, we read The Three Little Pigs, and it was a tale that many of us had, were familiar with. There might have been some things that were a little bit different, but for the most part, we knew the story and could tell it. Today, we're going to continue exploring how traditional tales can be told in different ways. The same tale can be told with little changes, and today we're going to learn that the setting of a story can change and it can even take place in faraway places like the continent of Africa. Today we're learning how knowing the structure and elements of one familiar tale can help us read and understand a different version of the same story. So we're gonna think about and use what we know about the three little pigs to learn a different version of that story. The story we're gonna to read today is The Three Little Dassies by Jan Brett. And this story takes place, like I said, on the continent of Africa. And instead of having the three little pigs, it's the three little dassies. And these adorable little animals are real. The author Jan Brett actually wrote a note in the story to tell us why she chose to write about the three little dassies. And I'm gonna read that to you now. It says, my African version of the three little pigs story began in 2007 when my husband Joe and I camped in Namibia in Southern Africa. One morning we climbed up and sat by a freshwater spring, sunning on the reddish rocks, excuse me, sunning on the reddish rocks were little rock dassies, the cutest and most unusual creature you can imagine with a big bump of a nose like a koala bear, bright eyes and soft fur. A red-headed agama lizard came along and acted as if he owned the place. Then the shrill whistle of eagles overhead sent the dassies running for cover. Eagles have a strong appetite for dassies. 
I went home with images of Dassies, the Agama lizard, and eagles dancing in my head until they became my characters. With the three little Dassies in dresses and flat turbans like the ones worn by the Heroro women since Victorian times, Joe and I agreed that our trip had turned into a treasure hunt. So Jan tells us that the characters in this stories are the Dassies, the Agama lizard, and an eagle. And if this story is similar to the three little pigs, which one of those do you think is going to be the character of the big bad wolf? Take some think time. Who do you think would like to eat the Dassies? Mr. Kevin, do you think it's the Agama lizard or the eagle? I'm placing my bet on the eagle. On the eagle? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, this, so again, the story takes place in Africa. How do you think the setting of the three little Dassies will be similar to or different from the three little pigs? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Well, Rashid, I remember in the Three Little Pigs seeing lots of trees and there were some hills and there were bushes around their houses. And I'm looking at the front cover here and I don't see any trees, which doesn't mean there aren't trees, but I'm just not seeing them. So I just wonder if that might be a little bit different about the setting. Now, let's review. In The Three Little Pigs, the pigs had to go make their homes and they encountered a problem. And the problem was the wolf. Only one pig was able to resolve that problem because the wolf ate the other pigs. And he built a sturdy house out of bricks and the big bad wolf could not blow it down. And that's how the third pig solved the problem. How do you think our story will be similar to or different than the three little pigs? See if you can make a prediction. Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy. Rashid, I'm wondering if, because we have three little Dassies and three little pigs, so I'm wondering if the Dassies are gonna build some houses and the eagle is going to try to destroy the houses to eat the Dassies, similar to the three little pigs. Now, when we think about how we can use what we already know about the story structure to learn a new story, it helps us better understand and remember the new story that we are reading because our brain can make those connections. So, okay, let's get started with the three little Dassies. Hot, hot, hot. The little Dassies were almost grown up and it was time for them to find their own place. Mimby, Pimby, and Timby waved goodbye to mommy, daddy, aunties, uncles, and all their cousins and set out for the distant mountains. Come and visit us, they shouted. A place cooler, a place less crowded, a place safe from big eagles. Oh. We were right. Just like in The Three Little Pigs, the three little Dassies are setting out on their own. And who are they trying to get away from? The eagle. We predicted that the eagle would be like the big bad wolf. The sisters traveled all day and all night across the Namib Desert, arriving at the foot of the mountain the next morning. This is where we will live, they agreed excitedly. Welcome, 
A squeaky voice called out from the scree. It came from a handsome, smiling Agama man. No one has lived here for a long, long time. Just me and a family of eagles up on the mountain. Eagles? The three little Dassies shivered in the hot, hot sun. Where would they build their houses? Mimby eyed the long grasses. These grasses will make a lovely, cool house, she said, and she set to work cutting, twisting, braiding, and bundling. She finished in no time. Be near and dear, sisters, she said, crawling inside for a nap. Okay, so this Dassy has built a grass home. How is this different or similar to the pigs? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, it's similar because the first little pig built his house out of straw but it's different because this grass is very, very green. I wonder if this little Dassie is gonna have a similar fate as the first little pig. I'm also noticing something interesting that Jan Brett does in her books, is if you looked on the left side, there is the Agama lizard looking. And when we look at these illustrations, Jan Brett gives us both a review and a preview in the left and the right side of her books. On the left side, we see that Agama lizard looking and that's what happened on the previous page, right? The Agama lizard was watching. On the right side, we have the second Dassie. That's showing us what's coming next. That Dassie is gathering something to build her house out of. What do you think it is? Use what you know about the three little pigs to see if you can make a prediction. Take some think time. What do you think she's gonna build her house out of? Maybe sticks? Let's find out. Pimby spotted pieces of driftwood Silver from the sun lying in the sand of the dry riverbed. These will make a fine wooden house, she said. And she set about collecting as many pieces as she could find. When it was finished, she hung up a, hung up a hammock and called out, be near and dear sisters while I rest my eyes. What did she build her house out of? Driftwood, that's really similar to sticks like in the three little pigs. Now look at the left side. Who's watching the Dassey? The eagle. Look at the right side. What is the third Dassey collecting to build her house out of? Rocks. Timby looked at the rocks around their mountain. I will make a stone house, she said, but it won't be as easy to build as one made of grasses or sticks. And it wasn't. She had to work all day in the hot sun to get it finished in time to sleep in it that night. A gama man had been watching them. He was happy they were staying on. He had missed having company. Okay, the third Dassie works really hard in the hot sun. I bet she feels really proud. And that reminds me of the third little pig who built his house out of bricks. And he was really proud of the house and it took him a lot longer than it took the other little pigs. That's something that's similar. And we can use that to help us understand what's happening here with the Dassies. The three little Dassies slept late into the morning as the sun rose higher and higher in the sky. The big old eagle who lived up on the mountain stretched his wings and flew down to look for a meal for his hungry chicks. Mimby awoke up 
woke up hungry and went outside. Suddenly, a long winged shadow passed over her. The eagle, she cried and hurried back into her house. I see you, Dassey, the eagle screeched and swooped down. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in, he squawked, beating the air with his wings until the grass roof sailed off. The eagle grabbed Mimby and lifted her up, up, up into his nest. <gasps> But the eagle was greedy. No sooner had he dropped Mimby into the nest than he spotted Pimby in front of her stick house far below. Two dassies would be double delicious, he thought. And down he went, feathers flying. Pimby looked up and saw him coming. She turned and ran back inside. The eagle landed and screeched, I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in, he squawked. Twigs flew, sticks rattled until Pimby's stick house fell apart. Then, just like Mimby, she felt herself being lifted high in the sky and plunked down in the eagle's nest. Timby looked out to call her sisters to come for a breakfast of tasty seed porridge. But instead of a grass house in a stick house, she saw a long shadow streaking across the rocks. I see you, Dassey. Here I come. Oh my gosh. What are you noticing? What is similar or different from the three little pigs? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, the Dassies are having the same problem as the three little pigs. The eagle comes down and blows the grass and the stick house down and then takes them to eat them. I'm also noticing that we were seeing the Agama lizard climbing and I'm wondering what the lizard is going to do. The lizard's been climbing up a mountain. Even there on the side, we see him climbing up some rocks. What is the lizard going to do? I don't even know. I can't even think of what the lizard would do. Let's keep reading and find out. The eagle landed and shrieked. What did the eagle say? Say it with me. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in. He flapped and clapped and beat his wings. Dust and sand blew everywhere, but the stone house didn't move. He tried again, flapping and clapping even harder. Dust and sand got in his eyes, but the stone house didn't budge. I see on the left side there, the Agama lizard has made it to the nest. And then if you look on the right side, we can preview what's going to happen next. When the dust settled, the stone house was still standing, but the eagle was coughing and sneezing. His wing feathers were bent and broken and he was missing tail feathers. Knowing when to quit, he hopped his way up to his nest. At least he had two dasses waiting for his dinner. Does he? The eagle reached his nest, but the dassies were gone. He looked down and saw them at the bottom of the mountain heading for a stone house. It was his last chance. He shrieked down toward the open chimney. 
What's this reminding you of? What do you think is going to happen? Use what you know about the three little pigs to make a prediction. Take some think time. I think the eagle's gonna go in the chimney like the wolf. Let's find out. Inside, the three sisters hugged each other. There's nothing like a stone house when there are eagles abundant, they cried. Just then, the eagle tumbled down the chimney. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll, a hot blast from the fire hit him. Fly home for a nap, he squealed. As fast as he could, he squeezed back up the chimney and flew home, all black and singed from the smoky fire. And Mimby, Pimby, and Timby never saw so much as a tail feather of that eagle ever again. That reminds me of the other versions of the three little pigs that I've read where the wolf goes down and it's too hot and he gets out and runs away. Mommy, daddy, aunties, uncles, and all their cousins, and Agama man too, had come to celebrate. Welcome, the sisters cried, to a place cooler, to a place less crowded, to a place safe from eagles. And if you travel to Namibia today, you will see Dassies living in stone houses with handsome Agama men looking out for them. As for the pesky eagles, these are easily spotted for their feathers are as black as soot. Now that sure had a happy ending. Unlike the two little pigs who were eaten, all of the Dassies were safe in the end. And the side illustrations really helped me understand how the lizard was saving the day because it wasn't included in the main text and Jan Brett didn't talk much about it as it was happening. Like most traditional tales, the Three Little Dassies has a happy ending. And it was a really interesting version of the Three Little Pigs. Now, as readers, we can compare two tales. We can think about who are the characters. We can think about where and when the story takes place. We can think about what happens in the beginning, middle, and end. What is the problem? How it is resolved? And what is the important message of the story? And this chart you are gonna to use to help you organize your thinking during your independent reading today. Thinking about how two of your stories are similar and how they are different using these common story elements. Today we learned how knowing the structure and elements of one familiar tale, like the Three Little Pigs, can help us read and understand a different version of the same story, the Three Little Dassies. So pay close attention to the story elements. Let's practice saying these out loud when you're doing your independent reading today. Character, setting, beginning, middle, end. And you're gonna write about what is similar and what is different in your books. You can use this chart in your ELA packet or if you prefer that Venn diagram that we've been using, you can use that as well. Whatever works for you as a reader and a writer. Also continue tracking your reading goals so that your teacher knows what it is that you're working on. And of course you can send us your Venn diagram or your writing in your learning notebook here at TV Classroom so we can know what it is that you're reading. And Mr. Kevin's gonna tell you all about how you can send us your work. That's right, first graders, you can ask your adult to help you email us tvclassroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. You can also send it in the regular mail and we live right next to the Dassies at TV Classroom, <laughs> 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Now, as always, it's time for our affirmation. This is the time we get to say positive things about ourselves before we go off to do our independent work. And today, 
I want to remind you that you belong. You belong in your community. You belong in our TV classroom. You belong in your classroom at school. You belong with your family. So let's all take a deep breath and remind ourselves, I belong. Excellent job today, first graders. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you back here next time in our TV classroom. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.